Welcome, honor guests, to the land of TMS. I am the Busybody Baroness, and this is a comment video from work. All right, let's get started. The first comment was from Catherine to Penny. She was thanking you, Penny, um, for your kind words. I accidentally erased it, but I do remember that she was first, and Freddie Edwards is second. Freddie says, I really hope that we'll get to see Dante and Sam travel to London on screen to track down Esme's old nanny, Maggie. But something tells me they might not get all the answers they're looking for because the nanny might end up dead. And I wouldn't be surprised if Ryan or Heather murders her just to shut her up. But we'll see. Hopefully the nanny can give Dante and Sam some huge information about Esme's life before she came to Port Charles and also tell them who her father is. And then Catherine responds to you, Freddie, and says, me too. Hope we don't get a shot of Big Ben in the hotel room discussions. Here's what I think is going to happen. Dante and Sam are going to get there. And like you said, either one or two things, either Maggie's going to be there and tell them everything they need to know, or she's going to be dead. I don't think that it was, if she is dead, I don't think it happened physically through Ryan or Heather. Heather is the one I think that has, um, she's able to contact or has connections with Victor. If that happened, I think it would because it's because Victor made it happen for Heather. Um, because I do remember Heather overheard Dante and Sam saying that they were going to London to seek out the nanny. And she did go to Ryan and say, you know, and talk to him about that. And he did say that the nanny didn't know about him. So you could be right about that, Freddie. She's either going to be dead, missing, or she going to be okay and just spill the beans. And yes, Catherine, I really, like, I feel like we got a little bit gypped in Paris, but because we found Lucy and everything, I wasn't tripping out. But I would have liked to see more of the catacombs, more, a little bit more of Paris. That would have been nice. Instead, of it kind of just looked like they were on set and they just kind of like, you know what I mean? So that's probably where we're going to get out of the London thing, too. Lashanta says the baby's name is Amelia Grace. Yeah, it was a really pretty name. I'm glad they thought it. That was really cute. Do you remember when Dante was in the hospital, he was programmed and the doctor liked Lisa. He came on to her. Yeah, I do remember that. He came on to her. She stabbed him and killed him and Scott helped her cover it up. When Dante came back, he was programmed and she knew the phrase. Anna figured it out and helped him. I forgot why she was involved. Talk about skeletons. Yes, Lisa has done way more things and um awful you it's hard when you sit nina carly and lisa down to see who did who did the worst lisa out of all three put together for sure um just on the strength of her being an awful person the majority of the time carly did stuff it was on the strength to protect her family or something she thought she was doing best for her family at the end of the day, let's not forget Lisa is just an evil ass old woman. Like the way she just would come after Anna just because she was so jealous of her. She was Lisa was a big ass hater when she first came to General Hospital. Put it in the comments. Who gonna check me? I'm telling the clean truth. We let's go back and tell the truth now. Lisa was a big hater. I did not like Lisa at first. It really wasn't. I didn't start liking Lisa, honestly, until they put her together with Max. Because I didn't like how she would treat Maxie. Do you remember when Maxie and Nathan were getting together? I couldn't stand Lisa. I couldn't stand the way she treated Maxie. Like, who do you think you are? Like, if you were such a good mother, like, you didn't even know where this boy was. Shut your face. And that's what I'm saying about Lisa. Um, when she sat there, I, I said I was going to talk about it in a recap. And I will tomorrow, but I'm going to mention it now. When she sat there and told Nina, she was like, what's so great about Carly? She's just as awful as us. Why does everybody always forgive her while we're shunned? That is true. But let me tell you why. Carly has built her own team. Do you see what I'm saying? She's got her children that she birthed. She's got her family, her mother, Laura, her, what is Laura to her, her cousin or something. She has more family and children like it just is what it is she is the matriarch of her own team that's just like my team like you can't you can't stop us you can't move us I'm the head of it and no matter what I do yeah they'll talk shit but at the end of the day they're gonna always have my back and do what I say and that's the same thing with Carly unfortunately not yet Nina doesn't have that but it's coming I'm telling you and doubly unfortunately for Carly, Nina's team is going to be part of Carly's team, if that makes sense, because of Willow and Wiley and little baby Grace and 
um, even Valentine, even honestly, because Valentine is a part of ELQ now. Valentine is very close with Nina. It's gonna, it's gonna be a lot. I am telling you, Nina, Valentine, Michael, Carly, Drew are going to come together. Put it in the comments. They're gonna come together on this insider trading shit, especially if what Otherworldly said is right, which is not as always right. When when Otherworldly, Michael, Freddie, Sandy, and Lisa say something, it always usually is right. So if if Tracy is coming back in March and she's going to be the one to turn in Carly and Drew, Valentin, and and then blame Nina for it, you crazy. You crazy if you think Nina is going to take the blame for this. Ain't nobody scared of you, Tracy. You not the top dog in Port Charles no more. Take you and your little snotty nose boy and beat it. And this also might break up Olivia and Ned. Put it in the comments. Just let me know what y'all think. Let me know what y'all think. This could be the team up with Carly and Nina that we've been waiting for against Tracy. What? Even though, even though this will work out for Nina and Nina's favor to just get rid of Carly, it's not going to help her relationship, right? It's not going to help her relationship with Willow or the children and especially Sonny. So she's going to have to figure out what's what. I, I'm ready for it. As much as I hate it, y'all know I hate to see my baby Carly have any kind of trouble, but we need to get through this. So come on, bring it on, Tracy, with your lonely self. You just mad because Luke pretend got blew up. He'll be back. And when Luke come back, I hope he be with Holly. Put it in the comments. I don't care. <laughs> Um, LaShanta is next again and says, I hope Ava's conscience eats her up. She has a black heart. Liz is trying to do what's right. Esme will tell it. Esme will tell it. Obert and Nina are two busybodies. Obert is forgetting she killed someone talking about skeletons Carly got. It's nobody's fault but Nina. The way she treated Willow, Laura is looking for her son. Yes, poor Laura running around like a headless chicken looking for uh Nicholas and people just lying to her, giving her to run around, won't tell her nothing. Um Ava's conscience is it she'll be fine because she's gonna have to help Austin. Now, once y'all know how we are in two weeks, we'll be like, dang, I wonder where they they gonna show us what they did with the body or not. In two weeks, we're gonna be fussing that they need to wrap up something else. What's gonna happen is we're gonna not see Nicholas for a while. And we're going to deal with Ava and Austin's mess. So, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, Austin going to help her get rid of the body. We're going to have to deal with little three apples high to see if um she's going to turn herself in. Because that could bring some trouble to Windermere. But as long as her and Austin get rid of the body right, I think they'll be okay. And then we're going to focus on Austin's problem with Mason and the paw tuck lady. Then this Chris says Dante is suspicious of the North Tower since he searched the premises and he smelled the fresh paint and bleach from when me and Demetrius tried to cover it up <laughs> of um, that Esme had been there. If Nicholas is just knocked out but still alive and Ava keeps him in the North Tower, Dante will raid the place and find him. If Nicholas is deceased and Ava keeps him in the North Tower, the corpse will smell and give it away. Austin may have verified that Nicholas is deceased, and here go the point of all points. But Finn and Elizabeth verified that Peter August was deceased, and yet he wasn't. So there's room for doubt. It's 40 acres and a mule's worth of um, room for doubt. Send us with these stories. Child back. Let me tell you what's going to happen probably. What's probably going to happen is... Um, Elizabeth might turn herself in. She's probably going to talk to... Um, Finish telling Scott what's what, but we saw in the 16 second preview that Finn gonna tell her like, listen, what good is it gonna do to turn yourself in now that Nicholas is gone? You're gonna have to take the blame for everything. They're pretty much gonna repeat to her what Ava said and they're gonna convince her. We're probably not gonna get the truth about what happened with Esme, Elizabeth, and Nicholas until Esme gets her memory back. I'm really not, I really do not think that Elizabeth is gonna turn herself in right now. I really don't. Um, I think you're a hundred, a million percent correct because we have a world renowned doctor and an RN and Elizabeth been an RN for, for decades and they still couldn't verify that Peter was dead. Um, yes, if, and let's just say if Elizabeth does decide to turn herself in and whatever, Don Tandem will search Windermere. Right. What reason would they have to search outside of the house? 
Do y'all see what I'm saying? And they're not looking for Nicholas. They're looking for evidence that Esme was kept there. Um, Ava wasn't living in the home at the time, so she doesn't know anything about it. She's, You know what I'm saying? As long as her and Austin get rid of that body somewhere on the island. Listen, tie a brick to his toe and put him in the moat. Who gonna find him? It's tunnels. It's it, Listen, <laughs> don't play with me. If I worked or lived in Windermere, you would have never found my husband. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. My husband is alive and well. He's fine. I just talked to him yesterday. He's fine. I'm just saying, though, they have so many places. A girl, she could have dragged. Put it in the comments. I'm sorry. Why did she drag him all the way from the sitting room slash living room slash whatever the hell that room is? Y'all told me it was. She dragged him all the way out there to the stables. When we know behind the fireplace, it's a perfectly good hidden tunnel. Why didn't she just drag him in there? All the stories. Okay. Um, Stephanie Clark Castro is next. She says, Portia's brother is Jeffrey from the Have and Have Nots Tyler Perry show. Yes. And he is wine fine, not in the box, behind the counter, in the refrigerator that you have to pull your debit card out to pay for. Listen, where is the father from, though? The father looks very familiar to me as well. Somebody let me know in the comments, um, you know, where the father is from, if you know. Is he from another Tyler Perry show or is he just somebody fine that they brought in from another stories or also let's talk about something because y'all know my mind wander. It's Friday. We got time today. What if, because, okay, okay. Y'all remember Phyllis was all key keying on the phone, right? And um, Nina was like, girl, what you about? And she was like, girl, I got me a boo pretty much. What if Portia's daddy is the boo? Oh, that would have made Phyllis the side chick. Go Phyllis. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> but wouldn't that be funny, though? That would be... Y'all know the writers. Y'all know that they like to keep it close, right? It's not too far-fetched to think. I'm just saying, Portia's mother is sickly. We don't know how sickly, but right now, to me, she's like got one foot in the grave and one on a banana peel. In my mind, right, you so sick to where you couldn't even come to the daughter's wedding and you had to have a caretaker, girl. So you ain't long for the story world. I'm not being mean. This is just facts, story facts. So let's just say like, yeah, he met Phyllis. Somebody also, please, please, please put it in the comments. Let me know where Portia and her family is from. But let's just say, Phyllis, that is the case. Phyllis and uh, Portia daddy is doing the mess around, but poor Phyllis don't know he married. He messing around with Phyllis under the guise of his wife is sick and he old and lonely, pretty much like um what was that other man and his wife when um the fresh Prince of Bel Air mama was on the show? We wasn't together, y'all. I wish we had the channel back then when Aunt Viv was on. But do you know what y'all know what I'm saying? It could be kind of like that, and then we can go from there. But put it in the comments. Do you think that that would be a good one? Phyllis could be the accidental side chick of Portia's father. Because, or, I ain't going to lie. I see him more with Phyllis than I see him with Aunt Stella. Because he seems like, um, what Molly said, he was dapper and suave. I can see Phyllis. Because Phyllis' husband was like that. Lenny was tall and dapper and suave. Please don't come for me in the comments, but I see um, Stella, she's more like my country aunt and shit, right? So I see Stella more with a Marshall type than a Porsche daddy type, if y'all understand what I'm saying. And I ain't going to say no more because I know y'all going to come get me because I probably shouldn't have said that. But that's just what I think. Um, Let me see. Did I miss anybody? <laughs> I'm not sure because I rambled so much. Okay, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Sandy Moon is next. She says, is Austin helping Ava because he works for her sister? Maybe. And uh, the worldly response says, Austin works for a family that gives him nothing but grief. So he's going to support Ava no matter who he's related to and, and part of. I really hope that him and Ava are not related. I hope he just works. What if he's just messing around with Olivia Jerome and now he's he fell in love with Ava and, you know, Olivia, it's going to be like an Alex and Anna thing all over again. That would be good. 
Hey, Sabrina. Sabrina Hughes says, everyone, I don't think Nick is dead. But for that to be true, here we go. Austin has to be in on the cover up and, and keeping it from Ava. Damn, that's a good one. That's a damn good twist. Wouldn't it, y'all? If this was a movie, that would be a M. Night Shyamalan twist. Put it in the comments. High five through the internet, Sabrina. Boop, boop. I would love for that to be true, but I don't want Ava to be like tricked or hurt. Not to say it couldn't happen, but I really do think Austin is started is going to end up falling in love with Ava. That would be a hell of a twist, though, Sabrina. Put it in the comments. Wouldn't that be good if turn come to find out Austin went down there to check on Nicholas and he found out he really wasn't dead? And Nicholas was like, listen, I can help you get out of your paw tuck situation or whatever. Do you see what I'm saying? That would be good, Sabrina. Good one. Cindy says, yes, yeah, Stella wouldn't just up and say she wouldn't perform at the wedding ceremony under normal conditions. Since she knows these aren't normal conditions, she can't go through with it. That wedding is coming up in Friday's episode, and somehow it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a beautiful mess, isn't it? Everybody's going to be dressed so fabulously. I don't even think I'm going to care. I'm just going to be watching, watching the fashions. But, yeah, like I said, she might make it down the aisle. But them vows ain't going to be said. Somebody is going to stop that wedding. It's not going to be Jordan or Taggart. We know that. So, it's it leaves who? Stella. Man, Aunt Stella. So, do y'all think Aunt Stella is outright? Like, that's why I haven't nobody been able to get in touch with her. Remember, Portia was like, you going straight to voice. She was going straight to voice. Do y'all think Aunt Stella was out getting a DNA test? How hard would it be to do that? Aunt Stella already had... um. What do you call it? That, sh that thing, that stuff for where you can see if you got your relatives and stuff. Like, if you got other relatives. So, how hard would it be to, for her to find out? She could sneak over to Curtis in them house while they at the wedding and get a toothbrush. Get Trina a toothbrush or something. Sandy says, Ava would have pushed Nicholas off the pair. Ava should have pushed Nicholas off the parapet and said he jumped, but I don't think he's dead. Ava should not trust Austin. Oh, no. He's up to something. I don't like the way he looked at her. I'm not going to lie. I felt that, too. You talking about that scene when they when she woke up the next day and she had that dream. You know, she woke up screaming. He came in her bedroom. Oh, I can't wait till tomorrow. We're going to talk about it. Um, I don't know if that was a look of empathy attraction or i'm gonna get you sucker like i don't know i'm like on the fence too but right now i think i'm holding out hope that he's gonna be just as kind and helpful to ava as he was to maxi that's all i can say cindy says that's what i thought too that ava would um, heave Nicholas. Off. Okay, so send this is, I think, responding to you, Sandy, sweetie. She says, Will heave Nicholas off the balcony <laughs> into the moat below? She and Austin might do that yet. None of this would be happening if the show hadn't given the actor the heave ho. Do you guys think. Did anybody find out why Marcus Coloma left the show? The last thing I heard is that he read the script, he didn't like it, he didn't, he didn't finish filming his scenes. So did he read the script and see his character was going to be killed off and said, bunk this? Or did he read the script, find out his character was going to be replaced and said, bunk this, and the writers had to like do a whole redo? Or is it um, what one of the other hands said that he read that Tyler Christopher is coming back? And he got mad and didn't want to finish filming his scenes. This would be a wonderful way, though, for them to bring our Nicholas back. Y'all know how they do. They take him away from us for like a few months and then we get him back again. Sherry Robinson says, saw a spoiler. This is it. This is it like Michael Jackson's last tour. This the um, comment that I've been waiting to get to because this is good tea. Good job, Sherry. Sherry says, saw a spoiler that said Tracy was turning and turning in Drew and Drew, Carly, and Nina will be blamed. Now, I do remember Otherworldly um, telling me that Tracy was coming back in March. And Otherworldly was letting me know that, um, I think she said, though, Ned was going to do it. Hold on. Let me finish reading your comment, Sherry. She said she saw a spoiler that Tracy was turning in Drew and Carly and Nina will be blamed. 
I can see that happening because Ned is a spoiled boy, a spoiled old boy man like Nicholas. Tracy is insane for that company and she doesn't, she feels like it belongs to her and her alone and her son. I could see her doing that to sabotage um, so Ned can continue to control ELQ. But I do think what will save Carly, I know it's, I can't believe I'm saying this, is going to be Nina and Valentine. Watch. Valentine, first of all, does not want Ned in control. He only dealt with Ned so he could get them shares, right? At the end of the day, he knows Ned is not good at this. He already came to Michael and asked Michael, could he go ahead and, you know, take over the, the business? And that's when Michael said, well, Ned is going to be pissed and tripping out. And then that's the reason why they backed off is because Ned came with that insider trading, you and your mom, insider trading shit, like a old snitch, gonna. So... All I know is, at this point, I certainly do believe Tracy is going to come and put on her mom cape and save her old baby boy. It's going to put a tremendous strain on him and Olivia's marriage. if it Because him and Olivia have bro almost broken up and broken up so many times. I'm surprised that they're still together, to be honest. Um, I think Nina and Valentine, because Nina will lose everything. Do you see what I'm saying? If this comes out. Willow and them will be like, what the hell have you done now? Like, you so hateful. And Sonny will be like, didn't I tell you to just chill out? So this is why Nina is going to be like, oh, my God, I didn't do it. And she's going to get with Valentine and they might say, if Carly put it in the comments. And this might be the way Carly and Nina become friends and come together. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Because I like when Ava and um, I like when Ava and Carly get along. So I can certainly see Nina and Carly getting along and me liking them being friends. Because I didn't like Olivia. After, okay, that's not true. I've always liked Olivia since day one. She was always so cute. But yeah, I guess so. But Nina and Carly could definitely be friends. I'm sure that's where the writers are going with this. It's, it, it's got to be. They have to have a common enemy. You always have to have a common enemy. First, and Tracy and Ned is it because Tracy, I don't think Tracy really know Nina like that. Put it in the comments. She should be careful. Like, yeah, I know Tracy, you a quarter man and you slick and you conniving, but you've been gone a long time, a long time. So she should be careful. Yolanda D and Otherworldly response to you, Sherry. So uh, Yolanda is saying, sounds good. Nina deserves it. <laughs> no. <laughs> but if she get in trouble, then Carly going to get in trouble. And it's just going to be a whole mess. And Otherworldly response and says, I commented. Oh, yeah. She says, I commented that Tracy, yeah, March appearance will be written as the case of Carly and Drew to include Michael as Tracy resents. His taking that seat at ELQ. Yeah, there you go, Otherworldly. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm here for all of the bullying. I can't wait. Gwen Sykes. Hey, Gwen, how have you been, dear? Gwen says, Portia's brother looks familiar. Wasn't he playing as Jordan's son at one time? There must be a shortage of actors for soap operas. Um, no, well, he played on Tyler Perry's Half and Half Nights. Um... Jordan's son originally was, I can't think of his real name, but he played on every, he played the brother on Everybody's Hates Chris. I'll put a picture up. Um, because I was baffled when we got this. I'm not going to lie. I didn't like him at first either. Because I was like, how is he? But okay. But okay. But the original, um, TJ was the brother from Everybody Hates Chris. Um, she said there must be a shortage of actors for soap operas like Franco and Austin. Then Willow gave birth to a three-month-old baby. Dex is much older than Josh. This dude was in the service and worked security. Cameron didn't have a chance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um... Okay, no, no, like I said, Portia's brother playing on half and half knots. Uh, I think the reason why we still have Franco Austin, you know, Franco slash Austin, and um, John McBain slash Finn slash Silas slash Vampire from Loving, 
is because they have a fan base, a huge one. And I'm not going to lie, I am part of the problem. I'm so sorry. When when One Life to Live left, I, I went in with draws. I, I missed Todd so much. And then when I see, and then they brought him, Blair, and Star on General Hospital, I was like, yes, yes. You know, I was so geeked up. But then they got rid of Blair. Then they got rid of Star. And it was like, you can't take them all from us. And I think it's just the fans. I think that General Hospital keeps those characters on because of the fan base. Put it in the comments. Because we could have been without Franco and Finn a thousand times. Like, really. We just like to look at their face. Like, I like to see <laughs> Finn and his awful facial <laughs> expressions. He still look like the vampire to me. And Franco will always be Todd Manning. Um, and yes, that baby is big as hell, but that baby is so cute. <laughs> that baby is so damn cute. It is about three, three, four months, it looked like. Yes, Dex is older than Joss, but we not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> we supposed to say that he about five years older, I think. Angela Johnson says, Jordan looks good with anyone for real, though. Riders come on. She does. She's just a beautiful woman. Yeah, she could make anybody look good. Because she showed. I was like, look at Taggart and Jordan looking how they look together. And then I think I put a picture up not too, like, maybe a few months ago of Jordan and Sonny. And people was like, oh, my God, look at Jordan and Sonny. So, you know what? You are 100% right, Angela. She's just one of those women that could just make anybody look good. Earl Coggin says, is this the way they decided to kill off Nicholas? What a stupid, poor way of writing. You don't get rid of a legacy character that stupidly, especially when that character is involved in major storylines. Maybe they'll surprise everyone to have him suddenly wake up from death. Austin, however, is a doctor and declare him dead. Well, like we just said at the beginning of the comments, they declared Peter August dead and shit, uh, Finn and the RN declared that. So who knows? I'm really sure they're not going to get rid of him in this way. I really, really am holding out hope that the next time we see Nicholas, it'll be the original one, Tyler Christopher. But I hate the way they did Marcus Coloma. If any, Can you bring Marcus Coloma back as somebody else? Put it in the comments. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't complain at all. I feel like it's Jason and Billy Miller all over again, right? It's like, damn, Billy Miller did such a hell of a job playing Jason and a hell of a job playing Drew, and they just kicked him to the curb. And now we don't have either one of them. Is this what we're getting? Are they, are they, are they pulling a Jason, Billy Miller on us right now? Steve Burton, Billy Miller? Is that what we're doing? Marcus Coloma, Tyler Christopher? It's just like all or nothing. We don't get anything. So hopefully we will get Tyler Christopher back. Hopefully. I just, I feel bad for Marcus Coloma too, though. It's hard to say, but I do miss Tyler Christopher and I would not be mad. I would probably do a whole special if they bring him back. Yes, I would. If they bring Tyler Christopher back, I got so much to say and so many pictures. <laughs> yes, I would be doing a Tyler Christopher special. Um... Sean White, she says, yay, you pronounce, oh, thank God. She says, yay, you pronounce my name correctly. Um, Portia's brother said, I'm not going to wear it. Okay. And daddy, yes, and daddy is nice looking. She says, hashtag salt and pepper crew. <laughs> I'm so glad I pronounced your name right. We have, De hey, Flynn, where are you? We have a few people um, with some with some difficult names like when you see them you you know it took me a minute and so i'm like girl you can't be doing this channel if you can't pronounce people names like i'm not gonna lie that was like one of the main things so i'm like how am i gonna do comments if i'm having trouble pronouncing people's names but y'all have been so patient and, <laughs> and kind to me i really appreciate it very much sandy moon says i don't think nicholas is dead he's hiding in the same place peter was hiding when he died, yes, Baroness Portia's brother was Jeffrey Harrington on the Have and Have Nots. Hope he's here to stay. Me too. And if any, like I said, please tell me if anybody knows where the father is from. Please let me know because he's handsome too. Catherine Piper says, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the prayers. It really helps me feel not alone. Love you all so much. This channel is the bright spot of my day. Oh, I'm so glad, Catherine. We got like, what well, we got like six more days left before you got to do your thing and I got to take my son and do his thing. It's going to be okay, right? We're going to have a nice relaxing weekend and it's going to be fine. 
Barbara says, I don't hear Portia's, I didn't hear Portia's brother say that about the brooch. I thought he was implying that because Portia was the only daughter. Oh, okay. Their mom had to, she, um, she and not he was going to wear the brooch. I could have misunderstood what he was implying though. Like I said, I poured up to the second happy birthday line. So I didn't hear none of this. Um, Sean says, I'm with you, Barbara. That's what I thought. I'm sure we probably just misheard. But we'll find out if he wants to wear the brooch or not pretty soon, right? He's not going to go anywhere, you guys. He's definitely going to be there to stay there to support his sister. His sister is definitely going to need all his support um, when all this comes out with Trina and everything. All right, you guys. Well, thanks for listening to me. Please hit like before.